Production support for In Focus is provided by Smithville, a locally owned business serving central and southern Indiana since 1922 with residential and business internet, voice and security services. Smithville, local pride, global technology. Information at smithville.net. Hoosier Energy, providing electricity for central and southern Indiana electric cooperatives and their member customers. Information at hepn.com and by viewers like you. Thank you. Following earthquakes in Haiti, Chile, and China, millions of people are devastated with nations hoping to overcome and rebuild. Giving from the international community is a necessity. But in a nation faced with an economic recession and problems of our own, are Americans able and ready to help out others internationally? How does the Hoosier State's efforts impact people all over the world? Tonight, we put community service in focus. Hi, I'm Ann Shea, and tonight we welcome you to In Focus. If you have questions for one of our studio experts, email us at infocus@indiana.edu or give us a call at 1-800-987-9848. Several earthquakes over the last several months have devastated millions of people around the world. In fact, in Haiti alone, a population of about 2 million people, it's been estimated that as many as 10% could have been killed. With such devastating news, how are Hoosiers helping with humanitarian efforts impacting people internationally? Following earthquakes in Haiti, Chile, and China, an estimated 3 million people have been negatively affected. Lieutenant Jonathan Fitzgerald of the Monroe County Salvation Army took his fourth trip to Haiti, spending 30 days there to assist with relief efforts. But he says the devastation he witnessed during the visit was much worse than on previous trips. The Salvation Army is responsible for uh, uh, a camp that's right outside of their, their headquarters, and it's basically uh, the size of a, a football field here, maybe Bloomington North, and 20,000 people are living there in tents, and there's uh, really hardly any ac access to, you know, running water, to uh, good s a good sewage system and those kind of things. So it really is just a really horrible condition for the people to live in. Uh, conditions certainly that the United States, that we almost have no concept of being able to understand what was going on there. Because Haiti doesn't have a source of income, Fitzgerald says, earthquake sufferers are even more dependent on assistance from the government and humanitarian organizations. If the money doesn't come in from countries like the United States that have been blessed with, with great financial resources, or countries like the European Union and, and the countries that make up that union, then Haiti really has no hope of recovering because they do not have the sources of income, they do not have the sources of, of goods and services that they can provide. Really, the people of Haiti uh, are desperate for change. They were desperate for change before the earthquake. And this is, could be, I believe, a catalyst for hope, a catalyst for change, a catalyst for a chance for the Haitian people to, to kind of restart and rebuild. Tonight, we'll discuss humanitarian efforts and international relief, even when American budgets are tight, as we put community service and volunteerism in focus. And joining me, as always, tonight is WFIU News Director Stan Jastrzewski. Who do you have in the radio booth tonight, Stan? And later this evening, we'll talk with Brad Pontius. He is the Global Outreach Minister for Bloomington's Sherwood Oaks Christian Church. He has been a part of a number of humanitarian relief efforts, and we'll talk to him about what it means to mount one of those. That comes up in a few minutes, though. Right back to you. All right, thanks a lot, Stan. Well, joining me tonight from the Monroe County chapter of the American Red Cross, Executive Director Sue Gully, Professor in the School of Public and Environmental Affairs, Dr. Leslie Linkowski, and finally, Lieutenant Jonathan Fitzgerald from the, from the Monroe County Salvation Army. Welcome to all of you. Thanks for being on In Thank Focus. You. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you. Leslie, let's start with you, if you wouldn't mind, because you have some really interesting numbers talking about disaster giving, and we talk about 9-11, Katrina, Haiti, and the tsunami. Uh, tell me a little bit about these numbers and how much are people actually giving? Yes, these numbers are compiled by the Center on Philanthropy, which is part of Indiana University. And in the uh, first uh, nine weeks or so after the Haitian earthquake, uh, Americans gave close to $1.2 billion. Now that's an awful lot of money, but it's not quite as much as we gave after the tsunami. 
uh, it's a lot less than what we gave after 9-11 and mm. far less at about the same period we'd already given twice as much after uh, Hurricane Katrina. What's interesting is that the giving for Haiti really started off very quickly, uh, but it's tapered off. We think that uh, we don't have more recent numbers. These are about a month old, but we think it's probably tapering off now. Why do you think that is? Why do you think that the giving to Haiti was a lot less comparatively? Well, it started off fast, mm -hmm. but I think um, you know people began to move on to other things. Other things were going on in the United States and around the world. Uh, we also had a number of stories that raised questions about how effective the relief effort was uh, as well. And I think not least important, uh, it's hard to sustain a high level of compassion over a long period of time. People just get interested and move on to other things. Jonathan, we just saw you in the story, and you were you had been to Haiti before the earthquake many times, mm -hmm. and then you had just returned about a month ago, you would yes. say. What have you seen in that time frame and the differences? I mean, how are they doing now? Sure, there, there's some elements of, of how they're living now that aren't really that different than the time before. We have to remember that the context of Haiti is already a, a third world country, one of the poorest countries certainly in the world and definitely in the Western Hemisphere. So it was a country before the earthquake that had sub really difficult standards of living for the people. But even after the earthquake, you can certainly see uh, an even greater need for some of the things that sustain life, just simple things like uh, access to good drinking water, uh, good things, uh, shelter, you know, those basic ne needs that we see and we know about. And then maybe we read in our textbooks here, uh, but there, they're, they're problems and things that they cannot find. And it's just difficult to find uh, access to that. And certainly now, as the rainy season approaches mm -hmm. in the country of Haiti, uh, the, the disease that can set into a place that where there's no uh, adequate shelter, where the water is uh, not adequate already, and then to have these compiling when you have massive amounts of people in small confined spaces, like I was talking about um, in, in the previous time, there's 20,000 people the Salvation Army is responsible for on the size of a football field. Mm -hmm. So it's just, it's just absurd, really, uh, population density that you're dealing with there. And that creates a, a difficult place to live. Does it become more difficult, too, when the heightened awareness of it? I mean, you don't see Haiti in the news as much now as you did, obviously, in the winter months. Mm -hmm. Does this make your job harder as well? Are you getting as many donations, things like that? Well, certainly, locally, the donations have tapered off to a, a very small trickle. Uh, when, we, when we first uh, heard about this disaster, without even really soliciting any donations, we saw really a, a massive amount of donations coming in, hundreds a day and now we may get one a week. So we can see what uh, Dr. Leslie has been saying happen. Uh, we can see that in our local chapter here of the Salvation Army. We can see that people have really almost stopped giving to, to this particular cause. Sue, are you seeing the same thing from the American Red Cross? Yeah, there certainly has been some tapering off, and, and one of the things we saw immediately was that there were many, many groups, schools, clubs, organizations around the, the county who organized fundraising events, and we still have some of those going on, and I, as a matter of fact, we have um, some of these events happening even in May, um, but there has been a tapering off. I think at, at last count, um, we had received about $90,000 just from our local uh, Monroe and Owen County uh, residents, and that's part of our jurisdiction. So we were, we were very impressed with that level of humanitarianism here. Okay, we'll get back to this conversation in just a minute, but